Seen, unseen. Seen, unseen. Baker, what are you doing? I'm demonstrating the principle of the seen and the unseen. Seen, unseen. Seen, unseen. I don't think the principle means what you think it means. The principle of the seen and the unseen is not about seeing or not seeing things. It's about alternate realities. Whoa, that's cool. When the tree fell on Charlie's hut, the world changed. In your reality, Charlie's hut is smashed and she has to spend money to rebuild it. Which is good for people who build huts. But if the tree hadn't fallen, you would live in a different reality. One where Charlie got to spend her money on fish for a party, which would have been good for people who sell fish. Wait, so the tree falling didn't make us better off? You only think you're better off because you see the current reality where the hut builders earn money. We don't see the alternate, the unseen reality, where the fish sellers earn the money. This is known as the broken window fallacy. Most errors people make when thinking about economics are due to the broken window fallacy, the failure to see the unseen. For example, suppose the Islanders agreed that everyone had to contribute 10 fish notes per month to a fund that would buy new shirts for everyone on the island. Awesome! I'd get a free shirt every month! But would they be free? Totally! Well, technically no. You'd have to contribute 10 fish notes per month. What if people didn't have to contribute to the shirt fund? What could they do instead? Whatever they want. Spend the money on other stuff. Bongos, baskets, whatever. Right. And what would all those businesses have done with all of those fish notes? They could hire more workers and produce more stuff. And that is what is unseen. When you make people spend their money on shirts, you create jobs and income for shirt makers. But you destroy jobs and income that would have been created for basket makers, canoe makers, and others. Okay, it's a wash then. We get shirt jobs but lose the other jobs. It's not a wash. At the end, you might have the same number of jobs, but those jobs are producing things that people would rather not have. But everyone wants shirts. But you had to force them to buy the shirts. If they had wanted the shirts more than baskets or coconuts or canoes or bongos, they would have already been buying more shirts. Forcing people to buy more shirts means you made them worse off because you also forced them to buy fewer things that they wanted more. I guess so, but what about an alternate reality where the tree doesn't destroy Charlie's hut and she doesn't spend all her money? It wouldn't have mattered even if Charlie had never spent her money. How did Charlie get her money in the first place? People bought her jam, and now she can spend money buying things she wants. So the money represents stuff the island owes her. But what if she never spends the money? I guess that means that she never collects the stuff that the islanders owe her. Exactly. When Charlie builds up a stack of money, it's because the value of the stuff she has produced for others is greater than the value of stuff she has consumed for herself. That stack of money is the difference. And if she never spends it, she's just provided more stuff for others than she consumed. Exactly. Looking at the money, it looks like Charlie is hoarding her wealth. But looking at the goods, Charlie has actually consumed less than she has produced. So, which matters more, the money or the goods? Well, to me, the goods matter. Money's just a tool to help exchange the goods. Hey. You gonna share that jam?